my intended last video. I look myself in the mirror. Gotta be strong. Gotta be very strong when performing this. Gotta make sure everything goes right. Nothing's gonna go right, of course, but still, gotta make sure. <sighs> Put some makeup on. <laughs> Bit of moisturizer under my eyes. Maybe something for my lips. Nah, my lips look fine, actually. Woo woo. Maybe take a quick shower. <laughs> okay, I've had enough. I've had enough. Don't drown me. <sighs> Gotta dry myself off. <laughs> <laughs> Don't you look. Okay, that's enough of that. Ooh, message. Unprofessional. Okay. Gotta put my work clothes on. The gi. This is it. I gotta make a stand to my people. Gotta tell them. Gotta announce about the 3011. <sighs> ah! No, no. There's another door. Okay. Nope. Uh, not this room. This one. Yo everyone, listen up. It's been five long years since the start of my journey here. Five years of Minecraft, and gags, and memes, and roleplays, and building, and editing, and animating, and so much more. And it has been really fun, I have enjoyed myself. I've built up the past five years to see how far I'd go, how far I'd come, and we've gotten here. On February 16th, 2018, I made the decision to leave 311 Studios. On its fifth year anniversary of my first video ever, which if you are lucky enough to watch this on the 1st of September, granted I don't procrastinate, then it, that is today. If not, that's the official day to me. But before we talk about the end, I'd like to go back to the beginning, and work my way toward the end. So without further ado, here's my journey from start to finish. Enjoy. August 2013. I was 16 years old and somehow getting bored in the summer. I'd just gotten a new computer capable of running Minecraft and so many other things I couldn't even count. And at the time I just didn't know what to do with it. After a while of playing on a multiplayer server known as Minecraft NX with some friends, the server owner Vide suggested that I try making some Minecraft videos on YouTube, like those really famous Minecraft YouTubers we keep hearing about. Keep in mind this is 2013, there was a lot. Some of the YouTubers I was thinking about at the time was Ethos Lab, B00, and DarkM77. So I decided to give it a try for a week or so. Vidax helped me get set up with recording software. Although, Movie Maker was such a pain. Such a pain to use. And at the time, my monitor was completely square, so that's why a lot of the videos back then had such a, a weird uh, resolution. Sorry guys. On September 1st, 2013, I released my first video, a Minecraft solo survival episode. And it was awkward, weird, and didn't grow very big. Gotta be strong. Gotta be very strong when performing this. Gotta make sure everything goes right. Nothing's gonna go right, of course, but still, gotta make sure. But after doing four episodes of the same thing, I got an invite to a newly started SMP series called Frostfire. 
September 13th, 2013, I uploaded my first collaboration video with a YouTuber called Rashad Raymond. Hey, it's Tyler here. He meant Raymond. At the time, I only had a few subscribers and Rashad had over a thousand. So it was a pretty big deal in my mind. Welcome everybody to another Frostfire group event. Today we are going to sacrifice faster than yours. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yep. Just kidding. Just kidding. Things ran smoothly for a while on the SMP, but during this time I was extremely addicted to Naruto. Like, extremely addicted. I read up on the wiki like every day. So I decided to make my first Naruto video on October 7th, 2013. It was a summoning jutsu video using the mechanics of a dog sitting being dunked in water to teleport the creature to its owner. It, it, it was a bit... weird. And it was only a small video, but it inspired the idea of making a Minecraft Naruto Let's Play using mods. And that was another defining moment for the channel. And all I have to do is unsit them, and I'm ready for a UHC Battle Royale. And if I push them, then I can unsit them all at once and stuff. They say the universe started with a Big Bang. A singular point in space and time where everything just convolged inward and exploded outwards. On October 18th, 2013, I started my Naruto C Let's Play. This is where the channel had its big bang. On water. I can walk on water. I'm Jesus. I'm Jesus. I can shoot fire. I'm Jesus. I'm Jesus. I'm Jesus. I'm Jesus. Ah! Of course, by the end of episode one, I realized I couldn't do this purely on my own. And I decided to set up a server with Ice Drake, a member of Frostfire who was willing to help me set up the server and play Naruto Minecraft. At the time, it was a very new concept to everyone, even us. So things started off shaky. Be 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 beautiful. Can you say it with me? Beautiful! Hooray! I mean, look, you got green stuff over here. <coughs> you got glowy green stuff over there. You got a mob dying over there. You got red stuff. You got lava. You got mushroom. Mm, mushrooms. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Can you really not keep a straight face? No. Things were going very well. Along with Frostfire and Naruto C, I decided to start playing some other games. My first was Sonic Adventure DX, followed by Kerbal Space Program. I enjoyed playing them for the most part, but something always felt... off. I was doing them at this point in time, but... I decided to cancel both series. I decided to stick with Minecraft. <laughs> I hate everything! <laughs> Wait, why does he have a glowing pump again? Because it? it's Halloween. So. What? My crack does stuff like that. Yeah, it does stuff. It always floats on the water. It wasn't until Naruto C episode 16 I finally figured out an essential tool for being a content creator. Making thumbnails! They weren't very good, but it was a start to defining the style I wanted to go with when making content. You can tell that I started to get more interest into entertaining and having a more fun outside of normal conventions. For example, when I started the Dragon Block C series, I opted to go with a formal, unformal introduction. Hello, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Frost... Naruto... Kerbal... Sun... Dragon Block C. Welcome to another episode of Dragon Block C. March 16th, 2014 was an extremely important date for myself and the channel. It was the day I uploaded my first animation. I I mean it. This this was like my first animation ever. And it's a Naruto-based Minecraft animation. So you can see how this defined things later on for me. But, around the same time, my style of content evolved. A more full and complete story was beginning to form with Naruto C ending. What? what was that? What's going on? 
Oh my god. See? Wow. Being converted over to one of the most favorite series on the channel to many. Naruto Mod Pack Season 2. I'm still annoyed at myself that the name is inconsistent between seasons! But the series was named this way due to us using a mod different from Naruto C. We opted to go with Sequa's Naruto mod. This was a defining point for the channel as a whole. Naruto! My no karafti! Oh, this is the big one, lads! This is where we got two Ronald, Immonum, Hyro, Broham, and the mod creator of the Naruto mod, Sequa. Starting with episode 0 as the initial announcement of continuation, with some classy Minecraft animation. Added to make sure you know I was paying attention. This is where I began my preparation. Yeah. Okay, I know you want it. <coughs> Moving on from terrible Killer B impressions, a lot of things kicked off from this one series and you could say it's why my channel stayed for so long. As I got inspired to make more and more Naruto stuff come to life in an infinite game of imagination, friends started to get invested, the audience got captivated, and I as well got captivated in what I was doing. More ideas came, there was more stuff to do, more motivation, everything was at its highest, so much fun happened, so many possibilities. This is when I started to make more off-series videos too, like Minecraft. Vines. Okay, I cringe at it now, but at the time I thought I was a genius, like Orochimaru levels of genius here. I made a water dragon animation. My videos became even more edited, and we passed 1,500 subscribers. I even did a mini teaching series with the Craft Kage that was a Q&A series lasting all of two episodes. Things were going fantastic all around for everyone. However, off camera, some arguments were beginning to form on Skype. August 1st, 2014. While having a meltdown and being filled with frustration, I decided that decisive action was the best course of action to eliminate any arguments behind the scenes. Shortly after, still having a meltdown and frustration, I had made and uploaded a short video titling it Minecraft Naruto Mod Pack Episode 12. This was another big turning point for the future. I kicked Hyro from the group and said that he would be gone from the series. However, I did it dressed as Toby. People assumed that I'd just gone insane. Well, yes? But people also liked the conflict. After a bit of talk and working out our differences, Hyro and I worked out a path forward. He was added back to the Skype group chat. Minecraft Naruto Mod Pack Episode 13 was something much different. It was much more roleplay and in character than anything we had done previously up to this point. I even animated a small segment in the middle of the episode, and changed the intro to make it a bit more freaky. The series from this point forward will be much, much different. More story driven, have a lot more animated parts, and not only because of audience excitement and captivation, but because we had excitement and captivation by our own work. Where is the brat hiding now? Definitely not behind you. I can hear you. Let's see how you deal with this. <laughs> <laughs> Skipping forward on the channel, some new playthroughs and new series were popping up. I started to try more stuff that I enjoyed and balanced out the amount of Naruto that I was releasing on the channel. Stuff like Sonic Adventure, Oakenstone, Dragon Block Z, and small animations. I didn't do much when I saw how much people would prefer Naruto. I couldn't help but agree. 
Yeah, I prefer it too. November 6th, 2014. There was an extremely unexpected video uploaded from my end and from my audience's viewpoint. It was a random Minecraft video labeled Evil KFC Chicken Murders. I went back to watch the video recently. I was in college at the time and as a bond to get closer with friends studying in the same course, computer games technology, a large amount of us decided to play Minecraft together because most of us had it. A server was set up and bonds began to form. This is where one of the most important bonds of my life began to form. A friend appeared that till this day is still one of my best friends. Everyone, please put your hands together for... Tyler, Nuova the Great. Come on, that's it. You, you want to go towards the hole. You see, the hole is your friend. You're, this is, you're a boy chicken. You're no! <laughs> 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 no. Yeah, make it too high, man. Make it too high. Oh, this is... Tyler and I had just started talking around this point, and even from our first video, you can tell that our personalities just mixed well. We always thought the first video of ours was the Dragon Ball Theory video, but it turns out that we had too much fun and we just had to share this experience. We'll get back to Tyler later. December 12th, 2014. Minecraft Dragon Block C Episode 10. I decided to incorporate Zession's Dragon Block C tournament as my own narrative for the series, as a way for it to end. I'd lost my ideas and passion at the time, and I tried to continue it to a point where it could end off quickly. After losing in the tournament, I ended the episode and added credits. It was a good run. God damn it! <laughs> Looks like Dark Damien is the winner! <sighs> that match went on for a while. Now, moving away from anime, I started to get to know a group called Oakenstone, a Minecraft multiplayer survival group that had just invited me to play with them on an Ultra Hardcore series. I agreed to join, and eventually I managed to join their actual SMP and I met someone very special there. All right, everybody. Hello, and welcome back to another episode of the Broken Stone server and all its wonderfulness. So yeah, I still haven't cleaned up after my prank. I really just don't want to, and the light's good anyway. So yeah, um, I'm here with Liam today. Hi. Hi, he's rather new on the Broken Stone server too. This is where I met Dark. A story writing, novel reading, optimistic bowl of energy and smiles. We met on the spin-off series Broken Stone, where we played together and we got to know each other well. And I am so, so, so glad I did. I got to know a lot about Dark and some things I learned from that point forward influenced my actions even till today. Within a short amount of time, a problem had arose within Oakenstone. I forget most of the details of the argument, but from one of the main points is that Dark's viewpoint and opinions weren't valid somehow. For some reason this really, really bothered me. I told the owner that I was going to leave, and shortly after Dark left too. So I invited Dark to hang around with my group. And before you ask in the comments, yes at one point I may have had a small crush on Dark a really really long time ago, but thank you, okay let's move on. July 19th, 2015. I uploaded my first fully conscious collaborative video with Tyler. It was a theory of what the androids could possibly be made of. We had fun and I got to say happy birthday to my buddy at the end. That made me happy. Today we are going to be talking about... Hyperbolomic... Um, um, sorry. Carry on. July 25th, 2015. For some time I had been building up a special episode with a lot more animation and story and action. And I even made an advertisement for the episode. Unfortunately, these episodes of Naruto Mod Pack did not age well. I was inexperienced, uncooperative, 
stubborn, arrogant, ignorant, and a whole load of other things. So the episode stressed me out. I was trying to do almost everything by myself apart from voice acting. On top of that, I only learned how to animate one thing a few months back, so trying to take on an entire episode casually was just far beyond what I could actually do. If you want to do so, you can go back and watch those episodes, but please be warned, they have not held up well in my opinion, and I'd have done them entirely different today. But for many people, those are the episodes that stood out, and those are close to people's hearts, so I thank you if you did like them. Makuton Udo Hashira no Jutsu! Nice strike. This is insane! Why are you doing this? Why am I doing this, you ask? <laughs> Tell me, Liam. Have you ever wondered why we wake up in our beds after death? As if death itself was a dream. Around this time, another Naruto Minecraft YouTuber showed up. A lot of fans were talking about this guy, so let's look into it. Enter Ginger Shadow. Hello everybody, Ginger Shadow here. A Scottish lad who was having fun making Minecraft Naruto videos just like we were. I'm not good with pronunciation, I'm Scottish. He was actually a bit surprised when we jumped on his live stream and started talking to him. Apparently he'd been a fan of what we were doing for some time. Yeah, it's default, I'm Scottish, that's why I'm bad at pronunciation, and I believe there's someone behind me. Hi there. <laughs> 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 this is Liam3011 aka 311craft aka the craft kage aka Mr. Voila Mike. in all of my glory and he's joining us here today for Hi. walls <laughs> honestly i still love remembering the reaction he had when we jumped on the live stream we ended up talking to him on skype about making some videos together and on august 17th 2015 we did just that a minigame idea involving the Naruto mod. I have to admit, it was kind of creative, kind of stupid, and very fun. Very, very, very fun. I think my forest is burning. Did you shoot a fireball? I don't think so. Inmo, if you burn down your forest, I am just going to laugh. I can do that. Wait, give me a I second. We were, <laughs> you don't, just because we tell you, don't do it. Oh, 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 I, I fireballed <laughs> myself. <laughs> Inmo, there's no Please, one I'm around. Yes. <laughs> How many times is Inmo? Okay, I've got, I've got this zombie After a few Naruto minigames, we got invitations to join Ginger Shadow's multiplayer survival Naruto series. We joined and I even made an episode on it, but something felt off about doing yet another Minecraft Naruto series and things were starting to go a bit broken in my mind. After recording with Ginger Shadow, I didn't record on that server again. But I stayed talking in the group chat for a little bit. Sure. Oh my yeah. gosh, man. Yeah. What? Hey guys, gonna, uh, is someone like gonna Oh my explain gosh, their I'm going to grab his shining gun work? and put him on my arm. Uh, uh, no, you're not. Sparse, so there's not much point recording this bezel. <laughs> oh god. Yeah. How? What is this? Keep him there. Right. Let's start. <laughs> oh How? What is this? It's a guy. Later, I decided to leave the group chat and focus all of my energy on my own Naruto series. At the time, I was dealing with a large amount of stress due to family life, coursework, and a bunch of other factors. I needed to get away and get something out of my life just so it's less messy. Unfortunately, Ginger Shadow's Naruto series was something new and it seemed like something that I should take away from myself. We were still okay with each other after this for a little while. Moving away from Video Talk and Ginger Shadow, I want you guys to have an insight of what was going through my mind during this moment of my life. Midway through the year, I had a very significant death in the family occur. The experience scarred me for life. Just a few days before I heard about the death, I was actually messaging them and telling them how much I loved them. My little brother even said they wanted to see them again before we got notified. Hearing it all back then, I was just in denial. I refused to believe that anything actually had happened. But time passed and I just, I had to believe it. Going through this hurt like hell and it still hurts like hell. The final assignments were getting done. They were being due. And 
It was all happening at the same time. My head was all over the place, and I refused counselling because I saw it as a waste of time. I could have been using that time to further my studies and complete assignments, or helping my family through their crises. Some more stuff happened, but it's even more personal than that, so I'd rather not go into it. After a few weeks, I thought things were going to get better, but I was wrong. During the same time, I had casually stumbled upon my girlfriend still logged into a Facebook account on my computer. Before I had the chance to actually log out, a message appeared. I read the message without even thinking about it. Long story short, she was cheating on me for a period of up to five months. She denied it for weeks and around October 2015 we broke up after an almost three-year relationship. I thought I could trust and rely on no one at that time. My thoughts became very, very dark. I don't really want to go into full detail about what went through my mind back then, and I'd rather not think about it. But it's thanks to people like Dark and Tyler that I got back up on my feet. I thought it would be better not to mention my sorrows to people around me, so... If my actions seemed very questionable back then, and I seemed disheartened or outright evil, there was reasons for it that I, I just couldn't mention at the time. This is another reason I left several things and stopped several projects. But let's move on to something much happier. Boom! September 18th, 2015, Minecraft Avatar had arrived. Although not Elemental Warriors. No, no, no. This was before Elemental Warriors. This is before I even knew what Avatar was. My friends Tyler and Aiden from college had invited me to become the Earthbender in their Minecraft Avatar series. I agreed not even knowing what an Earthbender was. I just thought it was cool to throw rocks. But this was a great, great time. It's thanks to them that I even watched Avatar The Last Airbender and Avatar Legend of Korra. I got to know one of the best shows I'd ever watched, all fresh and all new to me. A learning experience and I got to learn how amazing earthbending is. Tyler said I would fall in love with Toph. He was right, her character is amazing and she is just so badass. Underground, that's my thing. That's your tingling. Yeah, yeah, because if I wanted to, I could just go on. I think I can go on collapse and just like. Ah! Oh! No! 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 <laughs> Did I just kill us all? October 31st, 2015, Dragon Block Gods was started as mine and Tyler's idea for a Dragon Ball series where we followed the antagonist. Dragon Block Gods stopped after season one and five episodes. We still loved it, it's just that we kind of. we lost track of time. <sighs> this happens a lot. A lot. January 11th, 2016, Minecraft Avatar Elemental Warrior Season 1 had just released its first episode. Accompanying me and Tyler on this journey, we introduced two new college friends, Mason and Court. Mason being the firebender dressed as Elsa, and Court being the one who coined the phrase, Dolphin, Dolphin, Dolphin. Dolphin, Dolphin, Dolphin. <laughs> <laughs> I remember going into college the next morning after releasing the first episode. I sat at my desk, loaded up the page, and saw that the video almost had 2,000 views overnight. At the time, that was frighteningly fast, so everyone in the group was excited to make more as soon as we got home. We played more as soon as we got home. Okay. Yeah, yeah, Ma Mason just nah. runs the furnace. He hey, yo, is the furnace. The I am the- oh, yeah! <laughs> I am the furnace. <laughs> I am the fire starter. <laughs> yeah, watch out. Wait. <laughs> Moving on, February 29th, 2016, Minecraft Naruto Afterburn released its first episode after so many struggles with NPCs. Thank you, Ronald. 
we were so excited to actually get into a full roleplay with a full story this time. And we kind of tried to continue from there. <laughs> yeah, that's why the tree beds. Uh, uh, hi? What is he doing here? This is where a lot of fun happened in my opinion. I was happy and I was looking forward to playing Avatar with friends after college. Afterburn was coming out swiftly, Red Giant Labs was made as a series between me and Tyler. And to this day, Tyler would still like to do it again. I'm not gonna lie, Red Giant Labs was fun, even though it lasted three episodes. Gameplay of the newly released Naruto Ninja Storm 4 was coming out. We even made f a fun argument out of Avatar that lasted multiple fun videos. Tyler fought in creative mode by accident and we made a drama alert parody with pretty bad language. And we made a Batman vs Superman parody. And people thought the argument was real. <laughs> this, this amazed us because we're not sure how you thought the argument was real if we're making those videos. Whoa! whoa see, see hey, the big man is agreeing with me. How do you feel? Uh, for what? But I have been doing this sh and it is an accident. Accidents happen. Like you, you're an accident. <laughs> <laughs> now, this is also the point in time where we met Danny. Danny had been commenting on Tyler's videos and my own for quite a while. But eventually, Tyler got constantly annoyed and tired of having to check his channel notifications. So, what he did is he gave her a Skype so they can talk directly and any questions that Danny had, he could answer. Uh, but then Discord started to become a thing. And so a Discord channel was created with a bunch of us to chill together. Tyler invited Danny and that's where everyone spoke for the first time. At this moment in time, we had a separate server that was private just for us to play on. So we made a chill server out of it and we just chilled on there and played. But then after a little while, I recorded three videos of Minecraft Chill. During this period of time, Tyler wanted to make a Minecraft roleplay to do with Fairy Tale, And so everything began to get set up for that. We even made an application video so people could join us. Microphone quality, bad. C can we hear your microphone quality so the viewers know what we don't want? Billy, hook it up. <laughs> oh, all right, okay, Billy, Billy. Liam, get him. Do something. This is the moment in time that we met Wes and Solid properly. They both applied and had the best applications to join the fairy tale roleplay. From what Tyler tells me, I was extremely nervous about meeting new people, but we both agreed to add them anyway to our friends list. From there, fairy tale became too much for the group, and the project collapsed. Wes, Danny, and Solid all ended up joining Naruto Afterburn as my way of saying, don't worry, there's still more to do. At this point in time, my head was still a little shaky, so... My decision making was off and extremely inconsistent. I decided to program the Naruto mod with Sequa, on top of making Dragon Blood Gods, on top of making Minecraft Chill, on top of making Naruto Afterburn, on top of making random Minecraft videos like Spotlights and Outtakes, on top of making some animations, on top of making behind the scenes, on top of making chill Naruto Ninja Storm videos, on top of being invited to the 2016 World Martial Arts Tournament Dragon Block C. On top of meeting new people and starting to play Undertale, on top of college work, and on top of family life. <sighs> Something tells me that I made some pretty poor decisions taking on so much at once. To my surprise though, I actually uploaded a lot during this time due to my do everything attitude. However, because of that, my mental state suffered further. During the 2016 World Martial Arts Tournament hosted by Zession, I decided to participate with my friend Tyler by my side. July 13th, 2016 was the first tournament training video. Okay, so outside of the tournament, at this point I was questioning what it meant to be a good creator on YouTube. What makes good content? What makes bad content? What makes lazy content? What makes high quality content? What's there just for the money? What's there out of pure passion? And all array of other questions about being a content creator on a new platform. I say new because I was still learning how to actually be a content creator. 
if you can learn that. Because of my curiosity into these subjects, I started to make comparisons between other YouTubers. I compared them to each other, but I also compared them to myself. And doing these comparisons, it made me wonder if what I was actually doing is okay. These questions were brought on due to negative impacts on YouTube during 2016. Although I began to question these creative ideals back in 2014, 2016 is the year where I really dived into what made a YouTuber. This is when I said some pretty controversial statements. Yeah, I'll take, take a minute from there. Because, it's uh, about, a, about a minute to get up. Uh, we don't know much about Dragonblock CE. Yes, I know what you're going to say. We do a roleplay on it. Uh, we should know loads. No, no. We don't. I am chock to be down. I am legit starving right now. I'm going to die. <laughs> Already? How much moving did you do? This is why I logged out of the server when you were preparing stuff. I, I forgot to do that. Oh, shit. Now, you see, the first one of these statements inside of my Dragonblock C 2016 World Martial Arts Tournament video was that to win the tournament, you simply had to be Ginger Shadow, have a supportive fan base, and then profit off of the previous two things mentioned. For some reason, I'm not quite sure why, this specifically was an endpoint in conversation between me and Ginger Shadow. I'm not sure if this offended him somehow, but I'm sorry. But this is where we no longer were able to communicate with each other, and communication was terminated. Instructions on how to confused. win. <laughs> Step one, be Ginger Shadow. Step two, have a very supportive fan base. Step three, profit. That's the that's the only step I can think of. We have oh a server God, all to ourselves, and yet you still struggle. As I've mentioned previously, I was pondering for a long time about what is good and what is bad when it comes to being a content creator on YouTube, and I decided to be very analytical and critical towards both my own content and other YouTubers. For the sake of time, I'm only going to mention Ginger Shadow and Player 2. Going through both of these guys' videos to see what they're doing for traction, creativity in their content, and what I should be doing different in my own content, I concluded a variety of things that made me say, I don't personally like their work. It just isn't my cup of tea. Now hold your clicks off that dislike button. It's an opinion. Bad bug. Way, way, way like it. Yeah. But like, this is brilliant. Has someone already been on here? Probably. Okay, so around this time I made a lot of opinions about what is good and bad content through analytical viewing of other people's content. Now, going through the true Ginger Shadows content, my basis of why I didn't like it is it seemed to be produced for watch time and didn't have any clear sense of direction. There was little to no editing in the videos that I personally watched, and I found myself getting bored around the 5 minute mark. I thought that this was only made worse because we make the exact same type of content, and even though he was talking inside of a game that I enjoy, and with mechanics that I enjoy, and about a series that I enjoyed, I didn't find that much enjoyment from watching the episodes. I wasn't sure how he was trying to structure his content creatively, but there was little to no atmosphere, and the video lengths seemed more forced than anything. And thinking back on it now, I don't know if this made him a bad creator. I think just personally, it was bad for me, so my answer is... No, he's not a bad creator. Uh -oh. Did you teleport to some next dimension? How can you help me? Oh, oh that explains it. He provided the content his fanbase wanted to see and expected of him, and he did it differently from others who were also doing the same thing. He did it effectively without skipping out on producing content for such long periods of time. But for the question of did I enjoy his content, my answer is no. Don't get me wrong, it's okay if you enjoy his content, but for me personally, it's remained the same for years. I don't enjoy watching it, however, I did enjoy being a part of it when we did record together. He doesn't get the reference. I'm, co I'm confused. Man. Come on, walkie walkies! Hey, none of that, man. I, I can't. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that was all the way back at the start, man. Oh, I'll just wait by this tree. <laughs> Come on, walkie walkies, mother. And now to move on to a different YouTuber. Old Sir 
Ultralp. Player 2, a man who I've had a lot of controversy with over the years. Now, during the tournament video, I presented some of my comparisons I'd been making off screen as a way to engage the audience into my mind of thought. Where are you? I'm just bouncing around. Trying not to. Mm. Oh, a village! Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm in the village. I'm going towards it. There we go. Oh, wheat! And I double jump to protect the wheat. That's cool. See, that's the kind of skill we, ah! get, we have to learn when we're in the tournament. Some of the comparisons that I made on screen was Naruto Afterburn versus Naruto Chain Bloodlines. Which one is better and why? Dragon Block Guards versus Dragon Block Z Twin Fates. Again, same question. Which one is better? Why? However, this next comparison is due to odd timing, which me and Tyler were both thinking was some sort of connection, making us both decide to make a fairy tale roleplay application at around the same time. Player 2 making his exactly a week later, looking back on it now, it's more like comparing two mirrors. One mirror is completely square shaped, and the other is an oval shaped mirror. They both reflect the same thing, but they are indeed both different. There was little to no point as to why I brought these thoughts up in the tournament videos, other than the fact that both of them were participating in the same tournament. As I did with Ginger Shadow, I had previously compared my own content to that of Player 2's, and tried to learn how to better myself and how to go about my creative path to make better content. So what I found through looking through Player 2's videos, specifically his role plays, is that for the storylines he was going with, they didn't match the anime that he was portraying. But these weren't always the case. Another notable thing is that any and all recognizable characters from the actual series would be placed in his series as a way to engage the audience better, and a way to establish the world and story better. Whether or not this is a good thing, I cannot say. On one hand, you're pandering to the audience that there are pre-established characters here that they recognize, so they should enjoy it more. But on the other hand, you're establishing that these are benchmarks that you can compare his power to. Now, one good thing that I'll say is that there was editing in these videos. However, sometimes the editing was a bit poor. I remember specifically looking back at one of the Dragon Ball roleplays again, and it was one of the final fights in the series. I noticed that not only was he spamming an attack and completely just saying its name over and over again for a straight two minutes, but then while spamming said attack, he pauses the video and forgets to leave it out completely as he answers the door. Then following that, in the final part of the episode where guards come at the end and beat the bad guy, he forgot to remove that he went into game mode to kill the NPC off. These are just some examples of the poor editing that I saw, but this was a really long time ago, so things have changed since then. The acting looked bad. It looked stunted. And in my opinion, it slowed down the pacing significantly, and sometimes the pacing would just ramp out to 100. But in the end, my conclusion was I didn't enjoy Player 2's content, his roleplay specifically, because I wasn't his target audience. His target audience is much younger than I am, and they are not going in with the mindset that they're going to be watching something of godlike quality. Another thing that I learned while doing these comparisons is that although I edit my videos more harshly and try my best to put out quality, I was the one failing. Because Player 2 didn't spend all of his time on refinements and actually put out the episodes when he could, he engaged his audience better and gave them what they want more. The same thing can be said for Ginger Shadow. Both of them put out the content that their subscribers wanted, and both of them tried their best to get as much of it out as possible. With that being said, back in like 2016 is when I decided my final viewpoint on these two channels, and that is that they're okay. They're not for me, but they're okay. And that's where I ended my conclusion and analysis on most individual channels. And I started to focus more on how to just improve my own through my own thoughts and feelings. And by doing so, I believe I became so much harsher on what I did as a content creator that it stunted how much I uploaded by a large amount. Going back to the Dragon Block Sea World Martial Arts Tournament videos, during that video I mentioned that one channel had quality and the other had quantity. The quality one referring to my own channel, and the quantity referring to Player 2's channel. Stating that because of these creative differences, and us still making the same type of videos using Minecraft and anime, we should be rivals. However, things weren't taken that way, and the way I explained it was extremely egotistical and extremely controversial. Doing these sorts of comparisons only proved how insecure I was about my own content and my own creative path. 
Not only that, but it was just irresponsible to do as a whole. Why should I point out that one channel might be better than the others in my opinion and try to sway people to my opinion? About two days after the events and the video had been uploaded, I got an inbox from Recession telling me that Ginger Shadow and Player 2 were not happy about the things that I had said. I was told to apologize immediately or be removed from the World Martial Arts Tournament. So I did exactly what I was told and messaged both Ginger Shadow and Player 2. Alright, so unfortunately I don't actually have access to the Skype chats back then. I don't know if it was because it was so long ago that they had been permanently deleted, or that I am just blocked by both of them. I'm probably not, but I have no way of actually seeing either one of these chat conversations, so you might have to take my word for it, and I have no alibi to back up what I am saying here. I apologize greatly, as this probably makes it a lot more messy to understand what actually happened. Not only does it make it messy to understand what I'm trying to convey here, but since it's my memory, things might have been altered to suit my perspective. Whether or not they are, I can't say because I have no access to the original messages. But here's what I remember. So I messaged Ginger Shadow and Player 2 about their issues. Ginger Shadow never responded to my message. Like, Ever. I'm pretty sure he blocked me at this point. However, Player2 did respond to my messages and said he was hurt by what I said. What he does is his creative passion and whether or not he does it perfectly is none of my business. More or less, he wanted an apology for the things that I had said and I apologized greatly to him. I said I would make sure not to really do that again and to state clearly that it is my opinion and not fact that his content is the way I said it was. We talked for around three hours as I kept apologizing, and I explained that his content just was not for me. Afterwards, we joked around about making a video together in the future, and I believe I even offered to animate him an intro for one of his roleplay series. And from what I remember past that, we were fine, we were cool, and he understood what I was thinking and we didn't really message after that. Things kind of faded into obscurity as I looked through his Naruto series, and I remember specifically messaging him about how he structured the final boss fight, and how I actually liked the framing of the camera. That was the last thing I remember sending to him. But this isn't the last we heard of these controversies. Moving back to 311 Studios, a year of having Nuova, or so we had thought, had passed. We decided to make a video of us two just hanging out and playing Ninja Storm together in a room to celebrate our friendship. And honestly, we still really like that video. I love that video. Oh. Yes! I hate her. She's now my least favorite character. Yes! 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 No! Yes! Oh! From here, a change in content started to happen. As I uploaded Undertale, went through the Dragon Block C tournament, and made Avatar, a friend of mine kind of triggered a thought that began a downward spiral for me. The sad thing is, I can't even remember which person said it. They presented me with some facts that I've only been making Minecraft content, and that I was going nowhere because of it. I would be stuck doing it forever and branded a Minecraft YouTuber for life, no matter what I did. Even if I changed my content or went on to pursue a different thing, I would be branded that way. This broke me down as being branded and I didn't want it. It wasn't too bad until some extremely terrible things happened in the Minecraft community. A lot of YouTubers were found to be worse than they actually had appeared on video and so it brought Minecraft YouTubers a bad name. From then onward, I would try to post things that aren't Minecraft related. Although, my enjoyment of these things wasn't really there. I didn't feel creatively free to make what I wanted to do. I had to follow set instructions. With Minecraft, there's a world that I can make anything I wanted in and do anything in. But sticking to pure game Let's Plays, I couldn't and I felt restricted. In the end, I decided to say, screw it, Minecraft's more fun. 
and made more series that I really enjoyed. Enter Minecraft Naruto SMP! Sneaky sneaky ninja, sneaky sneaky ninja. <laughs> They're both looking for me. <laughs> Which is good because now it means I can sneak out. In season one, I was Liam Senju, and it was so much fun. I was Nuova's right hand man, and he was the Kage of our village. He was known as the Futon Kage of the Village of Peace and the Village of Wind. And we followed Naruto systems. It was genuinely Naruto in Minecraft. It was so much fun until I got burnt out. I didn't want to edit videos anymore. I was so tired of trying to make everything acceptable and creative. And the video craft had just burned me. I couldn't do it any longer. It just burned in my mind that it was a negative thing. And from there, I started to livestream a lot more. But that's okay, you guys enjoyed that for the time being, and I was forgiven later when I actually did edit more. But moving on from here, we have a big event. December 24th, 2016, the Naruto Afterburn group decided we should do something special to celebrate Christmas. And we wanted to have fun, so we made a bunch of Christmas songs with our Naruto characters. We decided it would be an album called Is That A Ninja Christmas? Both in reference to the fans not expecting a thing and a reference to Nuova's line, Are You A Ninja? in the series. The song parodies that were made were Running Around, The Shinobi, 12 Days of Hyrule, Solid The Rock Man, Gentle Fish Chop, Liam trained me, and all I want for Christmas is trees. I was in a jolly good mood making these, oh boy I was. They were all released around the day before Christmas, at the exact same time. But no time for cookies and milk this time, nope nope nope, we're moving on to 2017. At the start of 2017, I started with an important update. Looking back on it, it was just a video to hype myself up for the rest of the year. Try and do my best and complete as much as possible as the anime protagonist I am! But none of what was mentioned in the video came to fruition. Probably because I tried to take on too much at once. Although, I have a habit of that. It's a good habit to learn a lot of things, but it's a bad habit to actually get things done. It was a poor decision. Naruto Ultimate Ninja Storm 4 completed. Sonic the Hedgehog 1, 2, and 3. Happy Wheels. South Park the Stick of Truth and South Park the Fractured But Whole. Gary's Mod. Hack and Slash. Overwatch. Yandere Simulator. And much more. But slightly after this video, we started Naruto SMP Season 2 which eventually turned into Boruto Naruto the SMP. We had a lot of fun on it, but I really do wish that me, Danny, and Noah played a bit more on it. This was around the time I also started to realize people just lose interest. Ah. But I do love solid, so please do not do that to my solid. He did it twice! Oh! <laughs> 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 people back away, and people don't always want to play games. Friends started to back away from this point, whether it was from my own actions, or from what the world around me was doing, or even the game itself. I can't say for sure, but it bothered me at the time. It really bothered me. Starting out at university at the time, I was having difficulty studying and getting to know people. 
and I was trying to do too much at once. Plus, my social interactions, both in real life and the virtual world, were causing me to overthink things and become very irrational. I got into another low point because I believe that people didn't believe in my ideas, or my ideals, or my way of enjoying the game. Friends no longer wanted to play for the sake of playing, and no one would come online unless I fully asked them to. For a period of time, I posted just Let's Plays and no Minecraft. Well, here we are. So, your journey's almost over, huh? You must really want to go home. Hey, I know the feeling. May 21st, 2017. Avatar Elemental Warrior Season 2 Episode 1 had been released. Hello, people of the YouTubes! Yo, say hey, subscribe today, let's play the 3011 way. Me and Tyler remember just how fun it was making the first season, but with Mason and Court losing interest during season one, we couldn't really get them back. We tried inviting some people to see how it turned out. And I know before this I was saying how people backed away and didn't want to play, but Tyler really wanted to try Elemental Warriors again. And so we did. And in my opinion, it all turned out great. Four nations were built, four cultures out of four elements. But we'll get back to Avatar later. Anyway, wait, wait, Avatar what are we is doing back. Right now? <gasps> we're doing Avatar. That's what Avatar this is. is back, ladies Avatar and gentlemen. Is Elemental back. Warriors. There's only two of us here, but that's because we didn't invite anyone else. But fear not, for we are going to invite people in the future. June 19th, 2017, Naruto Ninja War had just started. Hail, Hail Raijin. Hello people of the YouTubes, welcome to, wait, what's this called again? Naruto Ninja War! Oh yeah, we warring boys, we warring. For me, this series was an outlet of frustration that I had at the time. We get, we're, we're gonna kill people, because we're awesome. We are the best team. What's our team name, Liam? <laughs> <laughs> the Raijin duo. Deal which, with it. Which means the Thunder God duo. For me, this series was an outlet of frustration that I had at the time. From feelings from friends, family, and university mixing in my head with the joy of having Avatar now on my side. And at the time, I was having a very existential mindset. I was suffering from internal existentialism and it was my way to try and feed out the negativity in my mind that we had a war and a game. I said I cared, I said I would spare, but now you'll suffer my destruction. All your things shall be Dead. People within the series actually noticed that I became more bitter and more of a terrible person while playing on the server and while recording the series. My attitude probably changed because I wasn't holding back my frustration and sadness at beyond face value, and at the time, this just ended up backfiring against my friends. I don't want to get into how this series affected me psychologically because there are many factors that are too personal to actually mention here and I don't really want to mention them here. But the series ended after Danny confronted me about everything and after a long conversation with Danny I decided the best way was to completely end the series and make sure that it didn't happen again. Ending the series was a positive for everyone involved and I still want to apologize now for how I made people feel back then. Just as Naruto Ninja War was ending, a shining light of hope had arrived. My Hero Academia RPG had just opened up, and an opportunity presented itself to me to leave all of what Naruto Ninja War did behind. At the time, it was exactly what I needed. I'm so thankful that it happened. It was all I uploaded and played on for a while. My friends were there. They finally started to be around me again. I could finally start interacting in a positive way. New friends came along. I met new people. The server was fun. I got to play with people in public. It was probably one of the most positive times of that year. I grew up on the streets, really. I hanged out with villainous people a lot. Specifically, Lina. 
and Jesui. That's pretty much how I was raised. Although during this time playing on the My Hero Academia RPG server, Ginger Shadow and Player 2 became a topic again as I was asked multiple times on the live stream what I had thought of them and what had happened between us. I explained that I didn't enjoy their content, but I also tried to explain why we don't have communications and why they're blocked. But nonetheless, I understand why they wouldn't want to communicate with me again or why they wouldn't want to collab again. This is the last we'll hear about them both. Sadly, my Hero Academia RPG ended, but my happiness didn't fade for some time. My friends again began to fade away from my daily life as we started to take our separate paths. I started to get sad again, and during this another Naruto series appeared. Naruto Shinobi Legends. I met a Mon Phantom there, a kind fan who wanted to help me out, and got involved in Message Me on Discord. It wasn't too long before he broke through my shell and asked me what was wrong, what was up, what was going through my mind. Why wasn't I happy? I think I needed that. Shortly after this, Avatar began to thrive. We're back to Avatar. The most players it had ever had on it started playing. Cultures were being built. Building styles were developed. New ways of getting moves were implemented. But even so, I still wasn't happy. I made a video called Life State at the time as a way to reflect upon why I was feeling this way. Why is my life at this state? Why is it in this state? I said in the video that I thought maybe I actually hate myself. I don't know if this was true, and I can't say that it was or wasn't, but it was a way for me to convey my thoughts and my feelings. Now, moving away from Avatar, back in December 2016, I had several mental breakdowns due to personal life and during them, consistently three people talked to me. Tyler, Danny, Dark, thank you. They talked to me and they talked to me about the way I was feeling and wanted me to share my thoughts openly. It's thanks to them that nowadays I feel like trying to explain myself with thoughts and emotions is the best way to help people understand me and it's the best way to help people understand each other. So whenever I'm presented with the opportunity to share my thoughts and feelings on something, I want to try my best to explain them to people. It's why I made the video called Life State. And it's a big reason that I want to share so much in this video. December 2017. So in December 2017, we decided to revive Naruto Afterburn after such a long break. It would be a special episode written and sorted by someone else other than myself, because I was still at a low point during this time and didn't want too much responsibility. So there was a scene at the end of the episode that was animated by me. I animated it and finished it just in time by staying up late each night and missing out on a bunch of sleep. And around this time of year, that was probably a poor decision to make for my mental and physical health. But now, we move on to 2018. Ah! Ha! <laughs> You idiot. 2018! We're on the current year now! The final stretch! Uh, Tyler, can we get some, like, confetti edited in? Yeah, sure, give me a sec. I guess you can consider this year the year of Avatar, because that is mainly what I made. Lots and lots and lots of Avatar. Plus, Dragon Block Sekai, you know, we progressed a lot through that. Danganronpa, thank you Danny, that is an experience I will not forget. And even a fighters match between me and Tyler, where we both absolutely sucked. I know you're only saying that because you got wrecked. We, we were both terrible, we realize that now. We've gotten better, we promise. 
Then there's also Naruto Bunkatsu and the faithful 311 news, which of course did notify people of this video, if it came out the right time. This year changed quite a few things. For instance, Avatar became more roleplay-like, and that's because mainly I just wanted some story aspect to it, and it turned out pretty well in my opinion. Sekai led up towards their final battle, and... Yes, I, I know I'm supposed to be making that, but... I, look, I don't know when it's gonna be done, but I don't have the time for it, I'm sorry. And Avatar, I guess, has some remaining episodes, which um, I'll get to at some point, I guess, within the next five years. But right now, let's talk about 3011 News, the live stream I did where I alerted people about me leaving 3011 Studios. And a lot of people went into panic directly after that live stream, which I wanted to avoid by telling people ahead of time that I was going to be like leaving stuff alone. But because of that, it's kind of panicked people more and there was surely a better way that I could have done this. I just did not know how. This is the first time for me too, guys. But as of right now, I want to make one thing clear, you know? The term leaving, I always use leaving rather than quitting because I'm not quitting like quitting a video game. I'm leaving as in I'm leaving stuff alone. It's not like I'm taking a break either because there's a chance that I might not come back and make more stuff, so I would rather use the term leaving than I would quitting or, um, hmm, I don't know any other way to put it, uh, I guess taking a break. Now, the truth is that I just kind of want to do other things and try other projects. I want to do things outside of 311 Studios that I hadn't had the opportunity to do before. So I use the term leaving because it doesn't mean that I'm gone forever, but it means I'm no longer at the helm of control. Things like Avatar, Dragon Black Sekai, and even Naruto might still be completed at some point. I just don't know when or if I'm even going to be the one orchestrating it. I won't be behind everything anymore like I have been for the past five years. And because of that, there's a lot of stuff that probably won't be done. But it frees up my time away from 311 Studios and away from everything YouTube that I've had the past five years to try new things and to try and get into new more stuff, you know? It also means that you'll probably see little to nothing released on the channel. Although there might be something eventually, but you know, there might not be anything, I guess. I don't have any more deadlines or release dates or even series I have to keep track of from this point forward. You know, there's still remaining episodes of Avatar, but they were already wrote down and they can be done at any time that I guess I have spare. But now I have the freedom to do what I would like to do, away from something I started five years ago. This has been the longest thing I have ever actually completed, I guess. It's kind of weird, you know? So why in the channel on September 1st, 2018? Why? Well, it was for convenience sake. It's the fifth anniversary of the channel. But it also allowed me time to think over the coming months. I had time to back out if I wanted to keep the channel longer. If I still wanted to play the game forever. And over the coming months, I decided no, I don't want to do that forever. At some point, everything ends, and from the start I knew this. It was time to make a decision. Do I continue onward, or do I take a different path? I chose to take a different path this time. By the way, just a few things. If the video didn't come out on September 1st, 2018, please note that it was meant to. <laughs> it's just... I took too long to actually get to making the video, and so I couldn't release it for that release date. But note that that is the time I intended, if it is not there. I'm sorry if it is not there, that's one more thing I need to apologize for. And secondly, 
If some series haven't come out or haven't finished by the time this video is uploaded, don't worry, I'm probably going to try and do those over time, but I can't guarantee anything anymore. So you might get a conclusion to some of the series, you might not. Avatar, for example, there might be a conclusion, but at the same time, I'm moving on now. And so, here we are. The point at which I leave, move forward and experience new things. It's been a hell of a ride over the past five years, with so many perspective and mood changes, I honestly cannot count. I gotta say though, I never once expected things to turn out like this. It's been awesome looking back on these things. I want to thank you all for the past five years. All of you. Welcoming me as part of your life, as well as I've welcomed you into my life. I want to thank you all for the kindness and support that you provided. Making these videos has changed me more than I can even comprehend. And even though there's a lot of low points, the future looks bright. And as long as we have a little hope, then I'm sure we'll meet again eventually when our paths cross. And guys, please don't be sad, all right? You got to be with me through this, and you got to be here with me now. We can always look back at those memories together. I know I will. Will you? Who knows, maybe at some point down the line our paths will cross again. Whether it be here or there, we don't know when or where, but it could happen. Now before we wrap up, I'd like to give a thank you to everyone who's been here for the past five years. And I want to give a special thank you to Tyler for helping me edit this video. Thank you, best buddy! You guys might recognize the following words. They've been used before and they're not entirely my own. But they're the words that best describe what I want to say the most. So I hope you don't mind me using them. To all the 3011 fans, experience, learn well, play well, feel well, eat well, and rest well. Say hey, smile today, and make your own 3011 way. Goodbye for now, everybody. Bye bye! Until we meet again, guys! <laughs>